This is one of my favourite little bays. We're on Pads Lake at Alderfen, and it's a beautiful little spot because the fish tend to patrol this margin. And I've had a look along, and there's already a few sort of, I've seen a couple of reeds shaking and whatever. I've dropped a little bit of bait in, and now it's just a case of being patient and waiting to see how they respond. But I'm looking forward to this. Wow, that's been seriously hard work. They've been really finicky down this edge, but uh, we finally hooked something. It's a bit jungle warfare this, so it's trying to keep it out of the Oh, it's the classic legs are knocking. Mouth gone dry. <sighs> People sometimes say to you, why do you love your floater fishing? Just, if they could see me now, stood here, up to me, up to me, well, let's just say up to the top of my legs in, in nettles. I'm supposed to be talking for camera here, but as always, you're lost for words in moments like this. You just go quiet and concentrate. And it's in the net. Yes. That was seriously hard work because what you haven't seen is the hour before that take where there was odd fish feeding around this margin and I'd walk up and bait a little spot and they'd take 10 yards down the margin. So I'd wait and I'd go there and then they're back there. I've chased them a little bit, but eventually we found a little group in this corner that were just feeding perfectly really close in. And I was able just to lower a free line bait straight on it. And I'm shaking like a leaf and that's fishing. There you go, long lean chub like common, caught from right under my feet in the margins on a free line oiled up pellet. Um, well pleased with that because the conditions were a bit tricky um, and I was chasing them a bit for a while, but in the end it all came good. Put up a really great scrap and I'm well happy with that. So we're popping back and carry on, see if we can get some more. Thank you. 
If I had to design a swim for floater fishing, this would be it. It's got an extensive bed of pads to my left in which there are normally some resident fish. To my right is quite a lot of open water where fish often patrol. But directly in front of me at a nice catapulting range is a large island with overhanging trees. And it's one of them places where you can really, if you're patient, get fish preoccupied. Because my favorite tactic here is, and it'll probably take an hour or so, but I will spend an hour or so literally just feeding off the island. And fish patrol all the way around it. So the perfect scenario is as they come round, they come across some floating flavored floaters and hopefully they stop there and have a scoff. So in basically I've got three options. I can keep an eye on open water to me, right? Fish just literally just swirled on a one of the floaters I put in about five minutes ago off the pads and I've got the island. So I've got completely three different options and I'm actually going to fish two of those. I'll set up a controller setup and an over depth anchored floater as well because I can leave that as a trap out in open water and concentrate on the other areas. For now, it's just a case of putting some bait out, sitting and having a cup of tea, sandwich, and just wait to see what happens. Right, we're sorted. Um, I've got two options, really. Um, I've got one rod set up with a size eight quarter mixer for a piece of crust if uh, they come in very close along the edges. Um, I've been feeding off the pads to my left for a while and there's been signs of fish there. And there's been some occurrences coming around the corner of the island, but nothing really significant yet. One of the biggest problems has been the weather. It's, it, we've had a bit of rain, we've had squally winds, We've had flat calm. It's been in different directions. One minute I've got my sweatshirt on, next minute I'm sweating and I'm back to t-shirt. And they aren't ideal conditions. So that's my excuse sorted. Let's have a, and we've got a take on the anchor. Then it's come off. Don't you just hate that? It's happened to all of us. Just starting to do the talky introduction to what we're actually going to do. But just before that, I just cast out the uh, over depth floater on a on a on a on a, two, on a little lead, just to keep it in position off the corner of the island. And literally, as I'm looking past the camera, just I can see the line picking up. There's a swirl out in the water. Hit it, brought it back, got it away from the trees, thought game on, and the up pulled. Don't you just love it? Anyhow, if we've had one chance, we might get another one. So let's get back to what we were saying. We're in position. I've got an anchored bait towards the end of the island. I'm feeding just off the pads to my left. And apart from the weather, which uh, I've already mentioned is absolutely all over the place, I've been in sweatshirt, cold. I've had the, just in t-shirt, sweating. We've had squalls. We've had blustery winds that go in every direction they feel like. So it's not exactly perfect either filming conditions or catching conditions, but we'll do our best. Quickly run through. I've got my magic bait bucket, which has bread. Two sizes of blue oyster glugged pellets and a pot, a pot of trigger ice pop-ups. These 15 mil pop-ups trimmed with just roughly with a pair of scissors, you can get them to be exactly like one of the expander pellets with the blue oyster on. And the, the advantage of that is, particularly for the anchored one, is that they just stay out there much, much longer. They're resistant to small fish, etc. They're that bit more buoyant, so they stay up um, on the surface and they're perfect. I've still got the bread and everything ready. 
The one thing I can't make my mind up about is which controllers to use. Um, I carry two. I carry the Corda uh, lay flat type controllers, which I think are absolutely stunning. They're brilliant. Um, they fly well, they, they fish well, um, but they do, they do drift, which is exactly what you, in some ways you want them to do. But today, sometimes I want them to stay still. Sometimes I want them to move. So I've also got some of the old original controllers, uh, which uh, have the bulk of the weight well under the surface and give me a bit more control. So at the moment, I've got my controller rod ready, but I've not actually got it um, set up yet because it, it depends on where the fish start to feed and whatever. So that's the game plan um, and it's time to get fishing. Right, having licked my wounds and recovered from losing that fish on the uh, anchored bait, it's also gone cold again, that wind's back a bit. So jumper's back on, thread's back on and I'm going to have one more couple of casts just down this edge here, see if there's anything about if not, I shall concentrate the last little bit on the uh, controller and the pellet. Well, I'm having a, a last throw of the dice. Um, Got to be honest, it's been really tricky. Um, I've just lost another one, so that's actually uh, three I've lost now. Just They've been very tentative today and they're not taking very confidently. But uh, I've been feeding another little spot here nearby to where I was, the next swim down. And there's one or two fish just come off the trees. Uh, take starting to take a few so I'm just going to give it a last hurrah just in this swim for a little bit um, before I lick my wounds and go home. This is a, a daft as it sounds a really tricky swim because there's a large overhanging tree and of course carp being carp they spend a lot of time actually under that tree and at the moment it's on the edges of that tree that they're actually coming out and picking off the odd bait. Now, I can see them, they're taking the baits confidently. It's a case of whether or not in the next half an hour or so, they come far enough off the trees to give me a chance because I'm certainly not putting a bait where they are at the minute because I know full well that by the time I strike, if I get a take, they'll be in the tree. And that is a waste of time. It's dangerous to the fish and it's not good for my health either. been hard work. Um, strange session in many ways. I'd like to blame the weather, perhaps post-spawning, whatever, but they've just not been on it today. Um, I've managed to get them feeding in various places, but never really confidently and never in groups, which is really what you want when you're surface fishing. Um, the weather's been all over the place, as I've said. Um, had that one early on and I thought, great. And he's reasonably confident of some more, but um, it hasn't happened. So it's time to uh, 
wrap up, pack up, let this family of geese have what's left of the floaters and get ready for another day.